Okay, it's Ryan Gordon, and I'm going to close this. Get this out of here. Okay, um, I said this jerk thing on Twitter about how I think it would be neat if someone just wrote a simple Winamp clone using SDL and stuff. And I can't sleep, so I thought I might give this a try and see what happens. Um, normally when I do these things, I tend to have a plan in place. I mean, sometimes I even write the things ahead of time so I know what I'm going to show you. But I'm going to just try and do this, you know, and just see how we do. Um, which means I'll probably say um a lot, I'll probably make some mistakes, I'll probably pause as I, you know, try to figure out what I'm going to say next. But I have a fresh pot of coffee, which is not going to help me sleep any better. And I'm just going to start on this, we'll see how far we get, and I don't know, we'll just go from there. All right, so let's create this thing. Never ever, when creating a new uh, repository, or never starting a new project, never add the README file at the beginning. As soon as you add a README file, it's the kiss of death. You cannot do it before you're ready to sh uh, ship something, show it to the world. Otherwise, it's just, just don't do it. It's not a good idea. All right, so let's go ahead and clone this totally empty repository here. And we are ready. Oh, I've cloned an empty repository. We are ready to get started. Let's call this sdlamp.c. That is not it. Okay, there we go. Nope, here we go. Uh, don't ask me about this text editor. It's weird, I know. That's just how life is. So, okay, any program that's going to use SDL, of course, is going to have to include its header. SDL.h, capital, lowercase h. Uh, never, ever include SDL with brackets like that. It's always with quotes. And the reason we do that is so that you can, um, you know, define where you should be including this by itself. So by convention, we always use quotes. Um, and any SDL program on any platform uses standard Unix mainline, main function, with argc, argv, all the things you'd expect. Um, even on Windows, where it wants win main, there'll be some macro magic in this header that will make this main into something else that you can call from that WinMain can call from. You write the same program. You always use main, even if you're on Windows, and SDL will handle smoothing over the differences. Now, I'm going to put the obligatory first fix me in this. Fix me. Error checking. Because I am not going to check for errors on things that probably are going to work, but absolutely fail when you least expect them to. So, um, We're going to start by just calling SDL init, which just you know says we need video we're going to draw things to the screen eventually, and we're going to play things to the sound card eventually. Um, so set those things up. And of course, when you do SDL init, at the end of the, your program, you want to call SDL quit, so it closes those things down. Um, there, we're done. Ship the program. Ha ha. So I guess the first thing we're going to do, if we're going to do anything here, if you're going to make a media player that plays sound, I guess you're going to need an audio device open. So let's start with that. Um, I should probably say right now that this may be unexpected, but I constantly have to look up function signatures here. So, SDL audio. Expect me to look at the SDL headers a lot. Open audio device. Here we go. Where are you at? Dun, dun, dun. We use this word a lot. There we go. Okay. So, opening an audio device in SDL so you can make sound. It's pretty easy. You have an SDL audio device ID. Let's hold on to that for a moment. Now, people will tell you not to use global variables, and they're just wrong about that. Um, these can get unwieldy on, you know, big projects, but for like something that we're hoping is going to fit in a single C file, it's totally fine to have a global variable. Um, it's not going to mess with you too much. If this gets unwieldy, we can refactor it later, but right now, sometimes it's best not to have to pass this stuff around from function to function, just be able to reach it directly. So I understand in the academic sense you shouldn't use global variables, that's what they say, but it's ridiculous advice. Everything does that is worth using. So, okay. Okay, when you open an audio device, you need to know the name of the device, which we don't. We're just going to say null for default, but if you had a specific thing you were looking for, Sound Blaster Pro, whatever, you get that list from SDL. If, you wanna, if you're using some sort of network audio device, you want to talk to a specific server, that would go here. Null's good. It's a good default. It says, give me what the user would expect to use by default. So, null for that. Um, 
uh, the, is capture zero because this is an output device. We're not going to capture audio. We're not reading from a microphone. Uh, we're going to play audio back, so it's not capture. It's zero. Now this is where things get dicey. Audio spec. You gotta tell SDL how you want the device opened. Zero this. SDL zero desired. SDL zero is a macro that does some magic to say this structure should be set all to zero. Just mem set the whole thing for us. Um, and obtained, we're, well, okay, so we'll fill that in a second. Let's just get this function call set up. Obtained, we're going to say null because we're saying we want this format for the audio device and do not give us anything but that. If the audio device can't handle it, SDL is going to do the conversion for us. We won't be any wiser. Everyone's happy with that. And zero for allowed changes is none. You must give me what I asked for or fail. Now, what's desired get set to? Let me get, oh my goodness, what's going on here? Let's see. Oh, stop that. Okay, I need an audio spec. There we go. Here it is. Audio spec has a couple fields in it. I'm going to tell you what these are. We're going to go through it. We're going to get through this whole thing. So the first thing is freak or frequency. This is what you want the audio device opened at. We're going to go with a nice, healthy, modern number of 48,000 48, hertz. Uh, which is what these are. Although, to be fair, most things we're opening are going to be like old MP3s that are going to be more like 44.1K or 22 point whatever K, but that's just how that's going down. Audio format. What kind of data do you want to give to the sound card? And in this case, we want to give it... What's the name of this thing? 32... Where'd you go? There you are. Audio float 32. We want... Give it floating point data and the current byte order of the system. And the reason for this, and a lot of audio cards do not necessarily expect floating point data, but SDL will convert that for us. But before SDL converts that, we're going to want to use floating point for fun things like effects and stuff like that. It's much easier to do all those cool visualization things in float 32, so we'll do that. Uh, we're going to set our desired channels to 2 for now. We can get fancier with this later, but 2. Silence, we don't fill in. Desired samples, we're just going to make this just a magic number. You don't have to worry about too much right now. 4096, we'll call it, give it 4K. About 4 kilobytes. Well, four. it's not actually kilobytes here. Four, a little more than 4,000 samples every time it wants to feed the device. So that's a fairly large number, but we're not deeply worried about audio latency here. So we'd rather it not skip if it doesn't need to. So... Um, padding we don't fill in, size gets filled in by SDL. Uh, callback and user data are interesting. So there's two ways you can do audio in SDL. You can give it a function, and that function will be called regularly, pretty frequently. Whenever SDL needs more data to feed to the sound hardware, it'll call that function, and you have to give it data. It's There's no option to say, hang on, I'm not ready yet. You have to do it right then, you have to do it fast. Um, that can be a pain for a lot of reasons. It gives you a lot of flexibility because you can run code in response to this request from SDL, but it can also involve a lot of tap dancing, especially because that callback happens in a different thread than you think it's going to. So we're going to actually set the callback to null, um, which will let us use a different SDL function that says, here's more data, just keep playing it. And if I don't give you data fast enough, then you just play silence until I give you more data. But in terms of programming, that tends to be much easier to do. Mm. So that's me drinking coffee, if you're wondering what that sound is. So we're just going to do that, and we're going to open the device, and, you know, you know, again, error checking. Um, but let's assume this just works for now, although that is a dangerous assumption to make. But at this point, we have a little handle to our audio device we just opened. We can say SDL uh, pause audio device, because they start paused, so they don't play sound until you unpause them. Zero. But now this is going to continue to play, play silence, because we have not given it any data yet. Um, but now, theoretically, we're up and run, running and able to make some noise here. So um, Q audio. Let me get the signature for this because we're going to need this in a moment. Where'd you go? Q audio. There you are. 
Easy peasy. Okay, so we'll keep that for a moment. We'll need that note for later. All right, we're going to need some audio here. So um, eventually, as we go along, we're going to get something that can load actual MP3s and stuff. But SDL has built-in stuff for playing a WAV file or loading a WAV file from wherever. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Load WAV. Dun, dun, dun. Where'd you go? Come here. That's read, right? Okay, here we go. Get this booger right here. So we are going to... Let's move this pause down here first off. Because you can queue up audio to play without actually starting the audio device playing it yet. So, Okay. Let's load a WAV file. Um, okay, so the way this works, you give it a file name, like in the actual like format of your operating system. Like it might be C colon slash on uh, uh, backslash on Windows, or it might be you know, slash home slash me slash whatever on Linux. But for now, we're going to just keep this simple, and we're going to say, um, here, what does load wave actually return? An audio spec. Okay. Steel audio spec pointer spec. I think this you have to give it one too. Okay, so let's just do that. Wave spec, we'll call it. Okay, and we will call. Let's see if steel load wave. We'll call it music dot wave for now. Let's see, we have a wave spec. What is audio buff in this case? Okay, um, it's a UN8, okay. SDL has its own little wrappers. This is just a, a, a type wrappers. Like UN8 works everywhere. It figures out that on most platforms that means unsigned char. UN8, wave buff. So that should be a pointer, and I can't spell. Come back, wave buff. There we go. Equals null just to be safe about this. And audio len is UN32, 32 bit unsigned in. Wave len equals zero. Okay, so we're going to load this thing. It's going to allocate memory for this. Wave buff, if it has to, and wave len, and tell us how much it allocated. Equals null. Let's just panic at this point. A standard error. Uh oh, couldn't load wave file. And we can do this because SDL is nice enough to have an SDL get error function that will give you a human readable string whenever something goes wrong. So you can just print that out and be like, this failed because file not found or whatever like that. Okay, so we can get rid of that. Okay, so now at this point, we have a device that's open. We have a WAV file that's been loaded. And in this buffer that it allocated, of wavelen bytes, which it'll set that to. We will have the PCM, the raw audio data of this thing. So now we need to get that into the audio device. And we have a small problem here is that we need to convert that to whatever we need. So let's go ahead and cue audio. Where is the thing? Where's that thing at? Okay, that's for that. Lock audio device, close audio. I'm just talking to myself here. Oh, well, I'm thinking about that. SDO, close audio device. When you open something, you should close it too. Audio device. I guess that's going to need an audio device too. So let's fill that in while I'm thinking about it. This is one of those like. ASMR videos, right, where I just kind of like mumble and everyone's just titillated by that, I guess. Okay, so let me think here. Okay, so queuing audio, we're going to need the audio device, which we know because we opened it, the data, which we know because we have it, and the length, which we have. The problem is this data is in whatever format music.wave started in, so we need to get that into the format we want. Or for now, let me just change this plan here. Why don't we just wait to open the audio device until after we've opened the WAV file. 
so that we know this thing is in the right format. And then don't do frequency like this, just instead of doing a desired thing at all, you know, let's just comment this out. Fix me, come back to this. Let's open the audio device, not with desired, but with wave spec, so that the audio device is opened in the exact format of the wave file we just loaded from disk. Um, and if the audio hardware cannot support the format this WAV file is in, then STL will do the conversion for us. So all we have to do then, again, this should be an error checking thing too, but is say, take all that data and dump the whole thing into the device right now. Wave buff is what I call that. And then wave len. And then once we do that, this will, Q Audio will make a copy of it. So we no longer need this pointer. Let me just see how you free this. Free wave. Free wave. Okay, there we go. I think we're getting rid of that in SDL3. Alright, so once we've queued the audio, free wave. Wave buff. That'll just get rid of the memory it allocated for that. And then, so the <clears throat> audio device has this giant queue of audio for that's filled with the entire wave file. Let's just assume it's not that big and that machines have a lot of memory anyway. And that will get us an audio device. And then we unpause the audio device so it'll start playing. Now at this point, <clears throat> this is the program. The next thing this does right after this is close the device and quit the pro and quit all of SDL and then quit the program itself. That won't do very much. That'll that'll start up and shut down right away. <clears throat> also, this is coming to my attention that just put an error in there just so that does that. Okay, so what we need to do here is cheat. We're just going to put a pause in here. Let's pause for SDL delay takes milliseconds, so. We'll call this just 5,000, which is 5 seconds. And then the audio device, which is feeding in another, feeding the hardware in another thread, will play for 5 seconds, and then we'll just, you know, summarily close it and quit. All right, so more or less we've, played, we've written a very, very basic but functional media player here, assuming I don't have any compiling errors. I guess we should probably try and compile this and see what happens. Let's see, what do I call this thing? SDL AMP. I guess we should have some warnings. This is not the recommended way to compile stuff, just for the record, but you know, I'm feeling saucy here, so we're just going to do it this way. Um, da -da -da -da, SDL AMP.C. And this part is kind of magical. I do this on the command line too. We have a little program called SDL config, which you tell it C flags and libs. This is very late 1990s stuff, but we still use it. Uh, basically says, give me the, the command line things I would need to compile and link an SDL program, which, by the way, is why you can do SDL.h in quotes, because this thing will always make sure the include path is set up to support that. Um, there are other ways to compile this. This is just dirt simple. I'm not even going to a terminal to do it. I'm doing it right in my text editor. Oh, I'm actually compiled on the first try. That's highly unexpected. So let's see what happens. Okay, we forgot to put a music.wave in here. Let's go ahead and steal the usual test from SDL, which people never get tired of. Music.wave. I'm going to turn my speakers up too. See if you can hear this when it comes through. Okay, so that's there. Let's see if this will work. I don't know if it will. This song, if this works, is called um, uh, the. You know, I forget what the name of this song is. I just. Totally had a brain fart about this. Something truth, I can't remember. I don't remember what I, this thing's called. It's going to come back to me later. I might even just Google it. Hang on a second. Uh, something truth. SDL sample.wave. What is this thing called? The something truth. I don't remember. It's just truth. 
This is really going to bother me now. Oh, I don't know. I'm just wasting time now. Whatever. Okay. Um, gosh, that's really going to bother me. Okay. We'll come back to that, though. Um, what was I doing? Oh, yes. Let's see if this thing runs. Is it the hidden truth? Oh, I'm having a senior moment. I'm not even that old yet. Okay. Let's see if it runs. Oh. It runs for five seconds and then it stops, which is exactly what we told it to do. Now, if you get rid of my goofy thing here, and you get rid of these fix me error checking things, and you don't add any error checking, you have a functioning media player here with 30 lines of C code. So that's kind of neat. We could take the white space out. This would be less. You know, 25 lines of code. It doesn't matter. Um, and just have this thing, you know, wait for three and a half minutes and then before it quits. I don't know. But that's not bad for that little code that we can actually make noise through this thing. So now we are a long, long way from Winamp. But this is a very, very good start to this. I'm going to go see how long I've been recording for. 21 minutes. Okay. We could stop there and then we can come back and do another one of these videos if people think this is interesting and we'll build this thing out a little bit. What do you think? Leave a comment or smash that subscribe button. I don't know. What do people say on the YouTube? It's embarrassing. I don't know. Anyway, okay. This is, you know what? We got through 30 lines of code and it feels like a success. It made some noise. We'll come back. We'll make this a little more robust and then we'll start making this into an actual media player and see what happens from there. What do you think? Let's do it. Okay, cool. I'll see you next time.